Black M reacts. I'm Quentin Corpywell. That's a Dean Rao. Mizzou starting 2-0 for the second consecutive season, pitching another shutout victory this time, 38-0 over the Bulls of Buffalo. Dean, the story of tonight, one of the many stories of tonight, was the defense. Uh, again, the only, I believe, the only FBS Division I team to open the season with two consecutive shutouts. Uh, Dean, I'll let you explain the stat that you found in full, the one that you were sitting on for a very long time up here in the press box. Uh, but, Dean, there was a lot to like tonight about the defense. Uh, what specifically did you like? Yeah, I thought that, uh, obviously, with the statistic, you know, uh, <laughs> hasn't happened since Don Faro's first season. I uh, just want to throw that out there because I would have absolutely exploded if Buffalo <laughs> got a field goal there at the end. But um, one thing that I loved from the defense that I actually touched on last time uh, against Murray State that they did again tonight that I thought was amazing because they actually had to do it against a more polished mobile quarterback uh, in CJ Agbana was the amazing ability of everybody on the team, defensive line, linebackers, and the secondary of just hounding runners when it comes to, you know, uh, wide receivers after the catch, running backs, uh, you know, closing gaps, especially in the second half, and um, quarterback, the you know, obviously a very mobile quarterback being held to like 19 yards on eight carries is absolutely impressive, and there's a lot to build on from that. And um, it's kind of a preview to what they're gonna be seeing next week, especially because um, there's a lot of mobile quarterbacks coming up. There's a, two very mobile quarterbacks coming up on the schedule. Um, not to look ahead too much, obviously, but one thing I also really liked was their the defensive line and the pressure they got on Ugbana itself really, you know, made him uncomfortable tonight. He was six of 20 with 55 yards and an interception. Um, doesn't really get any better for the defense and worse for the quarterback when it, as far as statistics go. Um, additionally, I just have to say that as a whole, uh, what a job for Okoye Platoon so far this year. Um, that was a huge question mark from this team going into this year is what are we going to see from the defense? And a lot of people automatically assume that questions leads to, you know, low expectations. But man, has he ramped that up in these two weeks here uh, ahead of some very important games. So, um, yeah, that, that's what I love from the defense tonight. Uh, you know, what about you, Quentin? Obviously, the offense. What did you see from the offense tonight? Obviously, some penalties to clean up there. But um, what did you see from the offense? What do you like from them? Yeah, uh, well, slow start. Leading three to nothing after the first quarter, just couldn't really find a rhythm through the air or on the ground. Um, it did not help, especially in the second half that Luther Burton was out. Uh, he had been sick all week for Eli Drinkwitz. Uh, Theo Weiss went out for a little bit. Brett Norfleet uh, is still week to week with an injury he suffered last week. Um, but even with Burden out and even with Mies, Weiss missing a little bit of time, I, I didn't think they missed a beat once they found a rhythm, especially in that second quarter, uh, where they put up 21 points on the board after, again, a, a sluggish start in the first. Um, I thought Brady Cook looked a lot more comfortable this week. Um, obviously, last week missed a lot of deep throws. Didn't test uh, the downfield passing as much as, as last week, but in the couple of times that he did, I thought he was generally pretty accurate. The one miss uh, I think he'll be thinking about, and the one I will go back and watch to see, uh, he missed Tyler Stevens in the back right corner of the end zone uh, a little bit later in the game, and he looked open. Um, I'll have to go back and watch that one again, but that was more of a nitpick. He was very efficient tonight, had a stretch of, I think, 10 straight completions uh, at some point in the game. And I generally thought he played better than he did last week, and then obviously the rushing touchdown. And it was funny listening uh, to Coach Trinkwitz and Brady Cook talk post game about that play. That was supposed to be a play for Tyler Stevens, uh, but when he wasn't able to leak out of the backfield in time for him to get the ball, uh, and so Cook audibled on the fly, did it himself, and almost did a full revolution into the end zone. I thought that was pretty impressive, and our photographer Cal Tobias got a pretty, pretty sweet photo of it. Uh, that uh, is already on the website, I believe. Yeah. It is, has been all over social He's media. A gamer. <laughs> so uh, very impressed with Brady Cook tonight. Um, the offensive line, I think, was the, the biggest problem area on either side of the ball. Uh, if you want to include special teams, Blake Craig was one of three tonight. Uh, not awesome, but the first one he drilled was from 51 yards. So distance is not lacking, uh, especially even on those last two kicks that he missed. He, he had the distance. Yeah. Um, the offensive line committed 10 penalties tonight, or excuse me, it was like eight out of the ten. It was most of most of the ten yeah. penalties 
were on the offensive line. Um, a lot of holding calls, one on Mitch Walters, who was starting a place of Cameron Johnson, who got hurt at practice earlier this week. Um, that one negating a touchdown from Nate Noel. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because um, I, I thought uh, our buddy Jonathan Litzkin actually noted this to me after the game. Mizzou's running a lot of plays to the right side. Uh, and that right side, it's, it's Connor Tolleson. It's, well, formerly Cameron Johnson, but now tonight Mitch Walters is in his fifth year. And Armand Membu, uh, that's a continuous three. They've been together, they've played together for a long time, as opposed to Marcus Bryant and Caden Green on the left side. Uh, and it's interesting how Marcus Bryant and Caden Green, as we've talked about ad nauseum, as you all have probably read and, and heard and listened to ad nauseum, those are probably two of the best players Mizzou could have gotten in the portal to replace Javon Foster and Xavier Delgado on the left tackle and left guard, respectively. But sometimes it takes time to develop chemistry. Offensive yeah. line is big on chemistry. It's big about uh, doing the same song and dance every single time. Um, and so I thought it was interesting. That was a little side tangent that uh, Mizzou is running a lot of plays to the right side. Um, but yeah, Mitch Walters, uh, an unfortunately time penalty there in getting the Nate Noel touchdown. Um, and so I think uh, hopefully that will be fixed in the coming weeks. Um, but thankfully with uh, this relatively easy uh, early scheduling, they were able to iron those things out. So when a team like like Boston College next week, a team like Vanderbilt, even though these teams are supposed to be on the quote unquote easy random Mizzou schedule, they've proven the last couple of weeks that they could put up a pretty good fight against teams that were supposed to beat them. Um, yeah. And so I think ironing out uh, the loose, the, I guess tightening the loose screws tonight uh, and last week as well, I think is going to prove to be very valuable in those big time games later in the season, even as soon as next week. Um, but yeah, I, I like how the offense, uh, the offense uh, rebounded after a, a sluggish first quarter. And so, uh, Dean, I, I guess to, to close things out here, um, Boston College next week, feistier than I think a lot of people might have thought, especially after beating Florida State uh, a little bit ago. Um, who knows how good or bad Florida State is going to be, but they beat a team that many thought they would lose to. Right. Uh, and so, Adeem, when you're looking at the game next week, Saturday at 11.45 in the morning here at Faro, um, what are some things you're going to be looking out for? Yeah, um, just wanted to touch up on, on one thing as well with regards to the, the offense as a whole. I thought uh, with, with regards to the offensive line as a whole, I think one thing we're really seeing in college football is like the whole mantra of, you know, the amount of, you know, you replace a certain amount of parts in your car, and there's a certain amount that you just can't keep replacing, or else the car's not going to run. It's all about chemistry in college football. Uh, very rarely are you going to see teams bring in a lot of new faces in the line, and it's going to work immediately, if at all. So, um, you know, very interesting thing, actually, that, that, uh, that was brought up about how the plays are going to the right side a lot. It's true. It's very noticeable, actually, now that I think about it. And um, with regards to Boston College, next week, Got a way more polished quarterback uh, as far as Thomas Castellanos goes. Um, he is, you know, I'm obviously in, in my, you know, an ACC fan through and through growing up, and got to watch him last year, and thought he was a really, ex he's a really excellent ad for Boston College. They have lots of, you know, creativity on the offensive side of the ball that is allowed to them because of having a guy like that in there as a signal caller. Uh, obviously, Florida State had a tough time uh, going up against them, and whether you like it or not, you know, Florida State's got a pretty good coaching staff and pretty good, you know, defensive talent back there, albeit are they doing well right now? Not really. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, first team you lose to losing to Syracuse this week, not exactly going to be the best letter of recommendation. But as far as what Mizzou can do, it's um, the adjustments at halftime, I think, have been the huge thing for me. They talked about it today at the presser, uh, especially Marvin Burks talked about how at halftime, one of the biggest emphasis for them was closing gaps better in the second half, and they did an absolutely excellent job of that. So one of the more important things is not only how can Mizzou start next game, because they're going to need a better start on offense. They cannot put out the start that they put on offense today and expect to have an easy going against Boston College. They might find themselves down by a, a, a you know a good amount, kind of like how Florida State was, which kind of put them in a hole in their game against Boston College. Uh, I think that's a team you don't want to find yourself down to. They have a very hard-working defense that our offense, uh, the, the Mizzou offense, is going to have a tough time, uh, you know, cracking. But um, this team certainly has the talent to do it, and um, you know, obviously, a lot depends on health. 
Obviously, Luther Burton had an Ill illness today. You have Brent North week to week. Cameron Johnson with a little bit of a, you know, a, a bang in the, the this week. So if they can go into that game healthy, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite the uh, the game. And obviously, a game I thought was worthy of get college game day, but um, <laughs> fortunately, not gonna happen. But yeah, it, um, it went to Columbia. It did go to a Columbia. Just but, uh, uh, one about 14 hours away by car yes. without stopping. Yes. Uh, unfortunate, <laughs> but, you know, have to think that there's games down the line this season that will 100% warrant the crew coming down to Furrow, if that's what you're really thinking about now. But, uh, yeah, just want to pass it off to you, Quinn, to finish off. Any final thoughts for you and any things you want to say about Boston College? Um, well, I thought one thing that I was interested to see tonight, C.J. Agbana, the last time he was at Faro was with SEMO in 2021. He struggled a little bit over the air, went 7 to 14 for 53 yards. But on the ground, he excelled 12 carries for 96 yards. And although Mizzou ended up winning that game 59 to 28, um, Agbana ran wild and he was super efficient with his carries. I was curious to see how Mizzou was going to handle that tonight, especially because uh, over the past couple of seasons, especially last year, they had struggled a little bit against elite running quarterbacks, namely Jaden Daniels. That's an outlier because he was the Heisman Trophy winner and the second overall pick in the <laughs> following year's NFL draft. Um, but not letting C.G. Ogbonna break contain, um, not letting him ad-lib effectively, I was curious to see how Mizzou was going to handle that tonight, especially because Buffalo really likes doing a lot of zone reads, basically forcing uh, defensive ends to make a decision on who they want to cover. And luckily for Mizzou, they got out to a pretty big lead uh, by halftime to where Buffalo couldn't really run the read option anymore. Um, but in the first few drives when Ogbonna was running the most he had all night, at least in terms of design runs, there was very little, if any, room uh, for him to operate. And even when Buffalo was forced to pass a lot, especially in the second half, Ogbonna wasn't really able to escape and pick up chunk yardage on the ground. Yeah. There was there were very few avenues uh, for him to traverse. Um, it was funny to drink what's called a sack avenue tonight. Yeah. So I guess along death row defense, if you take a right at the stoplight, there's sack avenue, yeah. which I think is, is a pretty sweet nickname. Yeah. Um, but I think you've got to be pleased. It was a complete game, especially on a day where so many teams who were favored to beat a team, whether it be... Um, I'm losing count, really. Today was a crazy day of college football. Um, Mizzou's taken care of business the past couple of weeks. And other than the opening quarter tonight, um, Mizzou was clearly the better team. Yeah. Um, and so if you're looking ahead to next week, yeah, there are some, there are some rough patches to iron out mm -hmm. over this next week, especially along the offensive line. Um, you gotta feel good. You gotta feel good, because uh, not only were uh, these two teams that uh, Mizzou was supposed to beat, but he actually went out and did it. Yeah. Uh, so next week, Boston College, 11.45 in the morning, Central Time, here at Faroe Field. Uh, should be a good one. Um, once again, I, I believe it's another sellout, uh, so the, the streak will be extended. It was great seeing everybody here. It was a whiteout today. Um, and even though Mizzou wasn't uh, rocking the Stormtroopers, they went with the reverse Oreo of uh, white on top, uh, dark in the middle and went on the bottom. Um, oh, I, I hope they pull out the Star Troopers at some point this season. Speaking of that, actually, uh, what's his name? Brady Cook pulled out the the Storm Trooper helmet <laughs> uh, after the games. Thought that was really cool. But yeah, that's really all we got to say about that. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, the Evil Empire striking back once again. Your final score from Faro Field, Mizzou 38, Buffalo 0. I'm Quentin Corpuel. That's a Dean Rao saying so long from Columbia, Missouri. Dear Rock M Plus listeners, readers, and subscribers, we are thrilled to announce our first ever Digital Mizzou Football Review Magazine. Inspired by the iconic newsstand staples like Athlon, Bill Steele, and Street and Smith, our team has created a PDF file jam-packed full of content for you to learn about the most anticipated Missouri football season maybe in history. Checking in at about 100 pages, we have in-depth previews of all 12 opponents, analysis of each position group, profiles of newcomers, exclusive photographs, features like a retrospective on the 2014 team, the evolution of Perot Field, Luther Burden's place in Mizzou history, and more. We also have an analytics Q&A with Bill Connolly of ESPN, the founder of Rockin. We also have college football preview content and much more. This digital magazine is available now. It is $15 for purchase, 
with discounts available for premium Rock M Plus subscribers based on your membership tier. $10 for monthly members, $5 if you have an annual membership. Now is the time to become a member to secure your discount on this one of a kind product today. We hope, no, we know that you're going to love this magazine and we can't wait to have it on your devices. M-I-Z. Thank you everyone for tuning into Rock M Radio, a proud partner of Fans First Sports Network. Rock M Radio is the official podcast network of Rock M Plus, a new and exciting subscription service provided by me and the other voices of Rock M Radio. Please take a few moments to head over to rockm.plus and sign up for an account today. The cost is only $5 a month and benefits include access to our live podcast, a subscriber-only message board, weekly newsletters, and more. If you enjoyed this episode of Rock M Radio and would like to see more just like it beamed directly into your personal device, make sure to click the subscribe button below and tell your friends. Our podcast feed is available through the Apple Podcast app for iPhone, Google Podcast app for Android, whatever app you listen to your podcast. You can also find Rock M Radio on Spotify. If you're looking for a podcast about your favorite team that is not the Missouri Tigers, Fan First Sports Network is your answer. A full podcast network loaded with the team-specific podcasts covering Major League Baseball, the NFL, NHL, NBA, MLS, and more. And we'll be back with more episodes of Rock M Radio coming to you soon. Thank you.